Have you ever stopped to think about what actually happens inside your body when you have diabetes and take just one bite of chocolate? It might seem like a harmless or a small treat, but the truth is even a single bite can trigger a cascade of complex and interconnected processes in your body that can have both short-term and long-term effects. Chocolate, while delicious, is not just a simple food. It's a combination of sugar, fat, and other compounds that interact with your metabolism in ways that are especially important for people with diabetes to understand. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Diacelon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. When you take a bite of chocolate, it's not just about the taste. It's about how that sugar impacts your blood glucose, how your body tries to respond with insulin or struggles to, how your brain and hormones react to the pleasure of the taste, and how all of that fits into the bigger picture of managing a chronic condition like diabetes. Whether you have type 1 diabetes, where your body doesn't make insulin at all, or type 2 diabetes, where your body has become resistant to the insulin it does produce. Understanding how that one bite of chocolate affects your system is key. It's not about fear or restriction, but about empowerment. Knowing what's happening so you can make choices that serve your health and happiness. Understanding this process helps reveal that what we eat is not just a matter of calories or cravings. It's a direct interaction with the body's complex hormonal, metabolic, and cellular systems. This understanding is particularly vital for anyone with diabetes because it shows how food is more than just fuel. It's a powerful signal that can impact health in profound ways. And even a small, seemingly innocent piece of chocolate can have wide-reaching effects on blood sugar regulation, inflammation, and long-term metabolic stability. Chocolate is more than just a sweet indulgence. It's a surprisingly complex food that brings together multiple ingredients, each playing a role in how your body processes it. Whether you're eating milk chocolate, dark chocolate, or even white chocolate, you're consuming a mixture of sugars, usually in the form of refined cane sugar, fats, typically from cocoa butter, and sometimes added milk fats, and cocoa solids, which give chocolate its signature flavor. Some chocolates also contain added ingredients like milk powder, emulsifiers, flavorings, and sometimes even added oils. When you take that first bite, your taste buds are immediately activated by the sweetness of the sugar, the creaminess of the fats, and the rich or bitter notes from the cocoa solids. Your brain lights up with pleasure signals as dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter, is released in response to the taste and texture of the chocolate. But beyond this sensory pleasure, a far more complicated process is unfolding in your digestive system. The refined sugars in chocolate, being simple carbohydrates, are rapidly broken down by enzymes in your saliva and small intestine, converted into glucose, and absorbed into your bloodstream. The fats in chocolate, while they do slow the absorption of sugar slightly, don't prevent the spike, they just delay it. This is why chocolate, especially milk chocolate and white chocolate, can cause both an immediate blood sugar rise and a more prolonged glucose response that can persist for several hours. For people with diabetes, this delayed response can be particularly challenging because it can lead to a false sense of security. Your blood sugar might not spike right away, but it can rise significantly later, making it harder to manage. Even small amounts of chocolate can add up over time if they're consumed regularly, and they can contribute to a cycle of elevated blood sugar levels insulin resistance, and increased cravings, creating a pattern that can be difficult to break. Once that bite of chocolate reaches your stomach, the real work of digestion kicks in. The carbohydrates in the chocolate are broken down into glucose molecules, which then pass through the lining of your small intestine into your bloodstream, leading to a rise in blood sugar. For people without diabetes, the pancreas acts as a highly responsive regulator, sensing the increase in glucose and releasing just the right amount of insulin to signal your cells to take up that sugar for energy or storage. But if you have diabetes, this system doesn't work properly. In type 1 diabetes, where the pancreas produces no insulin, there's no signal at all to tell your cells to absorb the glucose, so the sugar just accumulates in the bloodstream, leading to hyperglycemia. 
This can happen surprisingly quickly. Even one small piece of chocolate can push blood glucose levels higher than desired. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas may still produce insulin, but the cells in your muscles, liver, and fat tissues are resistant to its effects. This means the insulin can't unlock the doors to your cells effectively, and the glucose remains in the bloodstream longer than it should, creating a prolonged state of high blood sugar. This is why even a small, seemingly innocent bite of chocolate can have a more significant impact on your blood sugar than you might expect, especially if it's consumed without balancing it with fiber, protein, or other nutrients that slow absorption. The delayed digestion caused by the fats in chocolate can also complicate insulin dosing, especially for those using rapid-acting insulins, as the timing of the glucose spike may not match the peak action of the insulin, leading to unexpected highs or lows. Over time, these mismatches can wear on your body's metabolic system, increasing the risk of long-term complications like neuropathy, retinopathy, kidney damage, and cardiovascular disease, all of which are already heightened risks for people with diabetes. The glycemic index and glycemic load of chocolate are critical concepts for understanding how different types of chocolate impact blood sugar. The glycemic index, GI, measures how quickly a food raises blood sugar compared to pure glucose, which has a GI of 100. Dark chocolate, particularly varieties with high cocoa content, have a lower GI, a high cocoa percentage, 70% or higher, typically has a lower GI, around 23 to 25. This lower GI is due to the higher fat and fiber content, which slows digestion. Milk chocolate, on the other hand, often has a GI of 42 to 45, and white chocolate, which lacks cocoa solids, can have an even higher GI because it's mostly sugar and fat without much fiber. However, GI alone doesn't tell the whole story. The glycemic load, GL, takes into account the portion size and the total amount of carbohydrates in a serving. This is why even a lower GI food like dark chocolate can still cause a significant rise in blood sugar if you eat a large enough portion. For example, eating an entire dark chocolate bar with 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrates can have a much higher glycemic load than a small piece. It's also worth noting that while dark chocolate has more fiber and antioxidants, it's not a free pass for people with diabetes. The sugar, calories, and fat content still matter, and they add up quickly. That's why portion control and timing are so important. Because even a food with a lower GI can cause problems if consumed in large amounts or at the wrong time of day, such as late at night when insulin sensitivity is lower. The balance of insulin sensitivity, the presence of dietary fat, and the individual's current blood sugar levels all play a role in how the body responds to that bite of chocolate. And this complex interplay is why no two people may have exactly the same experience after eating it. The effects of chocolate on blood sugar also interact with stress, sleep, physical activity, and other dietary factors, making it an important but often underestimated piece of the diabetes management puzzle. When you eat chocolate, it doesn't just influence your blood sugar levels. It also affects your hormones and brain chemistry in subtle but important ways. The combination of sugar, fat, and cocoa stimulates the release of dopamine in the brain, creating feelings of pleasure, reward, and satisfaction. This dopamine hit can create a powerful feedback loop, reinforcing the desire to eat more chocolate, which is why chocolate is often considered a craveable or even addictive food. For people with diabetes, this dopamine-driven response can be especially tricky as it may lead to repeated indulgences that spike blood sugar and contribute to poor glycemic control. Beyond dopamine, Chocolate consumption can also influence other hormones like ghrelin and leptin, which regulate hunger and satiety. Eating high sugar, high fat foods like chocolate can temporarily suppress hunger, but they can also lead to rebound hunger and cravings later, particularly when blood sugar crashes after an initial spike. This roller coaster effect can make it challenging to maintain stable eating patterns and can contribute to weight gain and insulin resistance over time. Additionally, the saturated fats in chocolate, particularly in milk and white varieties, can contribute to higher cholesterol levels and reduced insulin sensitivity if consumed regularly in large quantities. 
This combination of blood sugar fluctuations, hormonal shifts, and potential metabolic impacts underscores why even one bite of chocolate can have a ripple effect on your body that lasts far beyond the initial pleasure. Over time, these repeated cycles of pleasure and crash can create a pattern that reinforces cravings and leads to more frequent indulgence, further complicating diabetes management. The brain's reward system, when overstimulated by sugar and fat, can desensitize over time, making it harder to feel satisfied with healthier, less calorie-dense foods, which can perpetuate unhealthy eating habits and contribute to long-term metabolic dysregulation. Not all chocolate is created equal when it comes to diabetes management, and it's essential to understand the differences. Dark chocolate, especially varieties with at least 70% cocoa content, contains beneficial compounds called flavonoids, which have been shown in some studies to support cardiovascular health, improve blood flow, and potentially enhance insulin sensitivity when consumed in small amounts. These flavonoids are antioxidants that can help reduce inflammation and oxidative stress, both of which are factors in the development of diabetes complications. However, it's crucial to remember that these benefits are typically seen with very moderate consumption, usually no more than 10 to 20 grams of dark chocolate per day. Even dark chocolate contains sugar and calories, and overindulging can quickly turn a potentially beneficial treat into a problem for blood sugar management. On the other hand, milk chocolate and white chocolate often contain much higher levels of added sugar and fat, with little to no flavonoid content, making them less ideal choices for people with diabetes. The key takeaway is that if you choose to eat chocolate, opt for high-quality dark chocolate in small portions, and try to pair it with protein or fiber-rich foods like nuts, seeds, or yogurt to help slow digestion and minimize the blood sugar impact. It's also wise to check your blood glucose levels after eating chocolate to understand how your body responds, as individual reactions can vary widely based on factors like insulin sensitivity, gut health, and what else you've eaten. This mindful approach helps you enjoy chocolate in a way that supports your overall health goals and allows you to make informed choices that fit into a balanced, sustainable way of eating. When it comes to timing, portion control, and the long-term impact of chocolate consumption, it's important to think beyond the immediate pleasure of that bite. After eating chocolate, your blood sugar will typically start to rise within 15 to 30 minutes, but the full impact may not be felt for several hours, especially if the chocolate contains a lot of fat, which slows down digestion. If you're on insulin therapy, you may need to adjust your dose to match the timing of that delayed glucose release, which can be tricky and may lead to unexpected highs or lows if not managed carefully. For those managing diabetes with diet and exercise alone, the challenge lies in balancing the occasional treat with an overall pattern of healthy eating. Frequent consumption of chocolate, especially in large portions or as part of a diet high in processed foods, can lead to repeated blood sugar spikes, increased insulin resistance, and a higher risk of developing diabetes-related complications over time. This is why it's so important to approach chocolate as an occasional, mindful indulgence, rather than an everyday habit. By being intentional with your choices, choosing dark chocolate, keeping portions small, eating it with other foods, and monitoring your blood sugar, you can still enjoy chocolate as part of a balanced lifestyle without letting it derail your diabetes management. Understanding the full picture helps you navigate those choices in a way that aligns with your health goals and empowers you to enjoy the foods you love without compromising your well-being.